Welcome back to this edition of the Sports Mix on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Spencer, Nick, and Colin, happy to have you with us. And we're pleased to be joined by legendary head football coach for the Shepherd Rams, Monty Cater. How are you doing today, Coach Cater? Doing pretty good. Really appreciate the chance to be on with you guys. Thanks for taking the time to come down to our studios. We don't. I've, we don't typically have a lot of guests because it's the middle of the day and not a lot of people can get out in the middle of the day, but thanks for coming on. And this big, big accomplishment on Monday afternoon comes out that you're going to be inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame at the end of this year. Uh, first player or first, uh, excuse me, first person that's been associated with Shepherd University to ever uh, get that honor. What was that uh, feeling like when you got the call? You know, it... It's a stunner. My wife had asked me the day before, believe it or not, she goes, would well, you ever hear anything about that deal with, uh, you know, last year when you were nominated for this, for the Hall of Fame? I said, no, but they just finished putting that last class in because they do that in December. Yeah. I could have waited a long time for this one. But uh, and it was crazy. The next day I get a box out in front of the house and it's got a football and congratulations. And it's a stunner because it's all of a sudden. But yeah. uh, it just, you know, it makes you take a seat and start thinking about all the people that you've been, you know, associated with over the years. Coach, first of all, congratulations on uh, making it into the Hall of Fame. It's an awesome achievement for you. And uh, I guess what was your initial reaction when you heard the news? And uh, I guess uh, how exciting has it been to, um, you know, know that you're going to be in the Hall of Fame? Well, I think the big thing you start thinking about, again, all the people that you've come into contact with. I mean, that's 47 years of coaching. You got to do what you wanted to do all that time. Didn't get fired, so that part's good. But uh, it, you start thinking about that an awful lot. And uh, then one of the great things is uh, Monday, even on Monday, I get 75 phone calls, texts, and people responding, I guess, on Facebook. My wife keeps track of that a little bit more than me. But... <laughs> All the different people, going back even to the 80s when I first came to Shepherd, 80s, 90s, and uh, former coaches. And uh, there's been some guys that, you know, have really gone on, done some great things. Jeff Castile, you know, Joel Gordon uh, at, the, at that level, where they're making a little more money than they did when they worked for me. But uh, I think it's the people so much that, uh, that you find out, that you start thinking about or contact you. That's, that's huge. As you just said, Coach Gator, again, congratulations. But 47 years coaching, 31 at Shepherd, going back to your younger self there for 47 years ago, could you imagine being at this point now in the college football Hall of Fame? No, you, you really don't. I, and I kid about getting fired, I, but that's that becomes the bottom line. You see that all the time. But I don't think anybody ever really gets into it thinking about what can I accomplish? Who's going to know about it? Will I, you know, will they remember me? I, I think the biggest thing is, you know, just having a chance. I was just talking with Robin and we were talking about you, you miss the people so much. You miss practice. You miss, you know, the just the different things that are involved with all of that. And uh, that's what you miss, not the 24 hour day recruiting part of it so much, but it's still, it was, uh, you know, it, it was still pretty exciting, and just uh, I think that's the thing that you come into contact or think about the most. And for you, you're no stranger to Hall of Fames. Obviously, Shepherd Hall of Fame class of 2007, West Virginia Hall of Fame class of 2020, um, and the Milliken Athletics Hall of Fame class of 99. And so you got inducted to Shepherd's Hall of Fame while you were still coaching at Shepherd. Is that correct? That's true. They said that's the first time that they had done that. Uh, I don't that's know what, pretty cool. Well, they, maybe, maybe they thought I was going to get a big-time job or something like that, <laughs> which we know that didn't happen. But uh, yeah, that was that was an honor, too, to, to go ahead and have something like that happen while you were still coaching. And what kind of – what has Shepard meant to you? I know you stepped aside, retired after the end of 2017, but uh, Coach McCook still being there today, him working under you for all those years – what does that meant that he was able to take over the program and lead it to where they continued the continued success that you had? Well, it was almost one of those things where I'm not going to retire if you don't give Ernie the job, and that <laughs> that wasn't the the deal necessarily. But um, I, I just am so thankful that, uh, and I'm thinking they're feeling the same way that that was the the way that they decided to go. And Ernie did so much for me, and like you said, was with me for so long. And Josh Klein really is the same way. Josh came to Shepherd as a player; he's never left, and he's done a great job had some really good mentors with Jeff Castile and Bob Haley and 
I don't know. You can't, you can't say enough about those guys and the things that they've not, not continued what I did because everybody does things a little bit different, but certainly what they're doing has been very successful, and I'm really proud of them. And you mentioned you know, spending 31 years at Shepard and having the success that you did have. Did you ever think about leaving, or was it just that you – you know, love Shepard so much that you, it never really crossed your mind? Kind of a combination of two things. I was a finalist for two jobs, one up at Cal PA. I'd mentioned this before, so that's not a surprise. <laughs> but one up at Cal PA, I left with the job, and then someone they'd, that the president really liked before who didn't like the town ended up getting the job. So I leave on Friday with the job. Sunday, I don't have it. And then I was a finalist at Morgan State, surprisingly enough. And uh that didn't work out for a variety of reasons, but uh, well, the two finalists they threw out and the president said start over and uh, the athletic director actually left and resigned over that because he, well, he took the directive as let's, let's get two successful people. But uh, I tried to look at the job at Southern Illinois University where I got my, well, Southern Illinois, is, Southern Illinois is, is, was home for such a long time is where I was born. But didn't get a sniff there so they didn't they didn't think that I was worthy but really I think you're looking or you're not and I can't tell you that I spent very much time looking I thought she Shepherd was that special and it, it got even more special with the success that you created during your time there 31 years what are some memories that you still look back on now and make you smile well, I, I think I got uh, contacted by uh, Dom Jones, who, who was at Shepherd one year as a tight end. And really the only year that Ernie McCook was gone was down at Liberty University. He actually brought Dom back, or that was the reason that Dom came and, and went to Shepherd as a tight end. One of the best we've ever had, played in the NFL for about six years. But he contacted me, and that was the first year, 2010, when we made the Final Four. Uh, had a forgettable trip down Mississippi, but uh, we, you know that was a very competitive game. But he was just outstanding, and you know I think that game. You always think of the games if you can get to the Final Four. That Grand Valley might be the you know the, one of the biggest games that I can remember. But there's so many over that period of time. It's hard. I know that Matt Miller asked me one time, "What are the the top ones?" And let's see if we look at it the same way you did. And there's there's too many. I mean, we were behind 35 to 13 up at West Lib once, and came back, outscored them like 40 to three in the second half, and uh, that was a big game for us. But it's one of those where everything goes right. But I, I don't know. There there were some great games. We don't fly well. Doesn't seem like that worked out too good in Kansas City. But that everything that led up to that and, and being a part of that, uh, you know, that was worth it. They were a better football team than we were that day, and, uh, you know, you understand that. But there's there's too many, I think, to try and these were the four or whatever that, that I most remember. And, you know, some other coaches going into the Hall of the, the College Football Hall of Fame, but you stand out among those coaches because of your 275 wins. How impressive is it to know that, you know, you were a Division II coach, for most of your college college coaching career, and then you stand out and you're going up against a lot of Division One coaches that are in here, that your name stands along with them. Well, it, it, it's great to be included. I know sometimes you're looked at as a you know a lower level coach, whether it's two, three, even one double A sometimes. But and I say that you're supposed to say it a little bit differently, the FCS, but. I think the idea that they still look at that. And Coach Luckhart that uh, was up at Cal and was at w &J, I think, uh, he went in last year. And he actually sent me a congratulatory note, too. So they still look at that. And, uh, you know, whether you have to accomplish more, I, I don't really know that. But, you know, it's a different level. And anybody, you know, I think, well, I think everybody understands the difference between one and, and two, uh, not just the scholarships, but uh, just the way you have to run a program at that level and graduate your guys and everything else. But uh, a little different with a transfer portal, that's for sure. And, Coach, I know uh, every time – you know the pro football hall of fame comes around and uh the people going in together always talk about the opportunity to i guess meet the other players or coaches that are going in and just talk football with some of the grades for you uh this class is pretty uh special there's a lot of great people going in tim tebow reggie bush um you know just are some players that i remember reading were going in this year dwight freeney as well so how exciting is it for you to be a part of this class and uh, I guess get to pick their brain on football and, and just, you know, be a part of 
you know, a lot of legendary people that part of the game, as it is every year, but, you know, just some names that really stand out. Well, I mean, it's it's going to be really special. I don't think there's any doubt. And maybe Reggie will help me get some commercials with Wendy's or something like that. That would be, that would be <laughs> nice. But, uh, no, there, there's always... A, so much talent that seems like it goes in with those players each year and you know you remember them. maybe I remember them a few more you know having watched them play being a little older but uh, it's it's amazing some of the talent then you're also surprised why did it take so long for some of these guys to get in yeah that is a, a good point to make um, you know why we have you want to get your thoughts on you know the Shepherd team from this last year and you know Tyson Bage and all that he brought to Shepherd and what he's going to be able to potentially do uh, as he's going to be in the Senior Bowl next month. Well, I think one of the things that's been fun is that uh, Coach McCook has kind of kept me involved a little bit, and uh, I've gone with him on some trips, you know, some some one-day trips, and he keeps saying I stole my whole seat on the bus and, you know, that how'd I get on here? But yeah, Tyson had a great year. The, the team has had, I mean, if you look at it, two straight Final Fours, which is which is difficult at our level to, to go ahead, and then sometimes you find out who's a little bit ahead of you. Look at the facilities at Grand Valley, but uh, Ferris State's a pretty good football team too. But Tyson's class was the last one that I was involved in recruiting before you know make the decision to retire because you're starting on that certainly by the time yeah. football's over. But you know it, it, they've just been so good, and uh, you know you hate to see some of those guys leave. I was surprised a little bit with Ronnie Brown, but. You know, Brian Walker, I can remember when, you know, when he first came to Shepherd, and, uh, of course, seeing his dad and everything, too. But, you know, he, Tyson, I think, is, he's got a chance. I, I quit trying to figure out who's going to make it at that next elite level uh, some time ago. But he's going to get plenty of looks, and he's going to be, as you mentioned, on the, in the Senior Bowl. And um, it's just great that he and his teammates had such a great year. Nick? I think, uh, you know, Coach, too, I mean, is, I guess, what's it been like? Because you kind of laid that foundation of Shepard making the Final Fours and, and winning a semifinal game. Um, and, and to see that success continue with a guy that you coached with and Coach McCook and players that you recruited and just uh, Shepard football continuing what you started and continuing to reach new heights, what's that been like for you? Well, you're you're proud of that you didn't leave the program, you know, when they weren't in, in good shape. Now that doesn't mean from one year to the next there aren't changes. Uh, when I came to Shepherd, they'd won a, a championship, and when uh, Coach Jacobs was the one-year interim coach after Coach Barr left, but. I, I think the big thing is that, you know, you, they're, they're continuing to win, whether it's going to be a little differently, because I always get kidded about we got to run the football and we got to run the football. And now they had such a great success throwing the football with a with a class act at the, at the QB position. But it's just great to see them be able to go ahead and continue that. Shepherd football, I think, has been respected for a long, long, long time, long before I got here, too. And it's great to see that no step back except steps forward have been taken since the time that Coach McCook has been able to go ahead and be head coach. As you just uh, briefly stated a little bit, that at the Division II level, there's not a lot of guys that have made it to that next elite level. And with that being said, not only were you a football coach, but for your players, you had to be a life coach to get them ready for their future that was outside of football. So what were uh, some, I guess, just wise words of wisdom that you always left with uh, your players or your staff that maybe you can share with us today as some wise words that still carry? Well, I, I think the big thing with as far as the players are concerned, I mean, you help your coaches go ahead. They're not going to make a lot of money at our level. And uh, I, I think the big thing is that, you know, if you can help them go ahead and take the next step, you can. And I mentioned some guys before uh, that have been able to do that. But with the players, and they get tired of hearing it, but how you conduct yourself, being able to go ahead, yeah, you're going to class, and the idea is that you graduate because it is much more difficult to go ahead and do things uh, to, to get to that next level from our level. All right, Coach Cater, thanks for the time, and congratulations on being uh, inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it, gentlemen.